Welcome to this Houdini notebook tutorial. This video is part of the Side Effects Labs notebook. And in this video, we're looking at the Labs Building from Patterns node. So just before we begin, we're going to be using patterns in the node that we're going to be looking at. And I just want to go over those patterns quickly, just so that they make some sense before we get into it. So the idea is that we have a particular module, right? And a module can be a window or a door, whatever it is. So let's just represent a particular module. So we have module A, that's going to be yellow. Then we have module B, and that's going to be orange, right? So this could be a door, this could be a window, this could be a wall. Either one of these could be a placeholder for a particular facade of a building. Could be a wall, could be a window, could be a door, could be the corner of a building, right? So when we work with patterns, we're going to be taking these modules and replicating them based on patterns. The patterns that we're going to be using are going to be either square brackets or angled brackets. We're also going to be using dash signs and asterisks, right? So these are the patterns that we're going to be using. Square brackets is just a single occurrence of a module. So this just means place one wall, right? So say we want to place one wall and A is a wall, we'll say square brackets A, that'll create one wall. So say that this grid on the right is a building and this over here is the lowest floor. If we were to do a square bracket like this, it would just place a right over there. Or what happens if we wanted to place A all the way across? So keep repeating it all the way to the end and use up all available space. That's where we use the angled brackets. So an angled bracket is going to repeat it all the way along. So for as much available space as it has, it's going to repeat it all the way along. A dash is going to be useful for alternating. So if we had a situation where we wanted A, then B, then A, then B, and so on all the way to the end. Then we could use these brackets over here, so the angled brackets, and all we would say is A dash B. So A dash B. That just means alternate A, B, A, B, A, B for the entire section. Then we also have an asterisk, and this is just in case there are variations of a particular module. So let's just say that B also contains C. So C isn't a module on its own, but B contains it as a variation. This can be thought of as a blue door or a red door, both contained inside of a door module, right? So we have variations. All we would then do to allow our pattern access to both of them is we would add an asterisk. So over here, after B, perhaps we would add an asterisk, then it can add either variation. It can add B, or its variation, which is C. So this may seem a little bit complicated right now, but when we get into the node, it'll make a lot more sense. So let's get straight into that. So this is a sub-level geometry node. We can go ahead and create a geometry node right over here. Now, if we type in labs and then go pattern, you'll see building from patterns, right? So we have labs building from patterns. Now, all it actually requires is a single geometry, and this is a block out for your building. So if we go ahead and just use a cube, this is going to be your building. So let's go ahead and make it the size of a building. Let's just say it's a 20 meter building, right? So we'll do a size of 20 by 30 by 20. Now let's just move it up by half of the vertical size, so 15, and we just have a building like that. If we plug it into the labs building from patterns, what you'll see is that it generates this over here. Now this might not seem like anything special, it's just removed the top and the bottom and added these cubes, but what it's actually done is created a modular building. Each one of these squares is now actually considered a module. If we drop a null underneath this and plug the first output, you'll see it's exactly what we see there. But the second one is this set of points. And this is for instancing different modules to each of these points. You can think of them as either a wall, a window, a corner, a ledge, whatever it is you can instance different things to these points. There's also different levels to it. So if you were to fill out each level, you can create floor designs, and then each level can have a different floor design. So that's what we have. We have these modules being generated. And what you will see is that if we change the size of our box over here, it's adaptive, right? So it has a little bit of a stretching room before it adds another set of these blocks. So what do we want to do with this? Well, we want to now take this and replace each one of these modules with our own modules. And this is where we're going to have to use a different node. We're going to use the labs building generator utility, this one right over here. And we're going to use this for two very specific reasons. We're going to use one version for building modules, as you'll see over here. And the other will be for a floor description. All this means is that a building module is going to represent each one of these squares but a floor description is going to cover the entire floor. So this is going to define what each one of these floors is made up of in terms of modules. Is it a wall, wall, and then a window? Or is it a corner, and then a wall, and then a window? 
you know, what is the floor description. So that's the other way we're going to use this. So we'll start with a building module. If we set our display flag on here, you'll see that it does throw an error over here. And we just need to give it some geometry. But if we go over here to our origin, you will see this over here. This is the area that we want our particular module to fit in. So you'll see that the axis that we wanted to face is the positive x axis. And we basically just want it aligned in this quadrant. So the way that we're going to do this is simply by firstly dropping a grid. So we just have a grid over here and we can actually show our building generator and template our grid. And then let's just try to match it up. So the first thing we're gonna do is shrink the size down. We can reduce the rows and columns. We can set this to a YZ plane. And then we're going to use a match size. So the match size node over here is going to allow us to match it into this quadrant that we have in our building generator. So if we go over here and then go to justify Y and justify Z, we can set them both to minimum. And now these will overlap perfectly. You can see this if I increase the size over here, it now fits exactly into the quadrant that we need it to fit into. It doesn't have to be the same size as the square. It just needs to fit into the same quadrant and face the same direction. So this is our new piece of wall. So we can actually do a couple of things to this. Let's go ahead and extrude this. So a poly extrude, slight inset, push it out very slightly. And then let's just do a poly bevel. The last thing we're going to do is just add a color. So we just have a color over here. So we're just going to change this color to a salmon type of color. All right, plug that into your building generator utility and it will be happy with that. There'll be no errors. Now, the only thing that we have to do is give this a module name. So maybe we just want this to be pink wall, right? So we just have pink wall and this is just one type of wall that we now have. This is a module and we can use it in various ways. So we're going to add a null and this is just going to make it easy to reference. So over here, we're just going to call this pink wall module. And now we need some way of feeding it into our building from patterns. This is where we need to create a floor. So over here, we're going to once again, use this building generator utility, building generator utility right over here. And this one over here, we're going to use as a floor description. Right, so this is slightly different. We're using a floor description this time. Now you will see that this one requires an action item. Now the thing about this is that it actually needs a primitive because it carries all of the different attributes generated by this node on a primitive. The easiest way to do that is by adding an add node over here, adding a point. And if you middle mouse on this, you'll see there are zero primitives. So we go over to polygons and just create a polygon out of point zero. Right, so now we have a single primitive. We plug this into the first input and now it's happy. Right, so I'm just going to put a null over here and just call this basic floor. And now inside of this building generator utility, what we need to do is we need to firstly give this a module name. So what do we want to name this type of floor? We can just call this something like basic floor. That's just an easy name that we can reference. Now this expanded form over here, we're going to tick this and you will see that there is this pattern syntax at the bottom. This is going to become a lot easier to understand a little bit later. But for now, just understand that we need to take a particular module that we've created. So in our case, we've created this module down here, which is called pink wall, we need to call in a particular module. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the greater than and less than signs. So we'll do it like this. And inside of that, we're going to put pink wall, make sure that this exactly matches what we've created over here. So pink wall and pink wall. So now we have a floor description, and we have a module that makes up that floor. So if we go over here, we can now merge these two together. So we go over here, merge these two together, floor first, module second. And just like this, we now have it perfectly set up to be used in our building from patterns. So we just take this and put it into the second input where it requests patterns. And if we set a display flag on here, it'll just be red. This isn't what we want. All we're gonna do is say show floors. This will show us all of the floors that we've created, right? Generic is just a generic one. That's not what we've created. It comes built in. Basic floor is the one that we created. And I can prove this to you if I just backspace this over here and change the name to something like pink floor. We go back over here, say show floors, pink floor. So I'm just going to go and change that name back to basic floor. Show floors, there we go. Now the pattern over here is going to ask us how we want to set up this building. And again, you'll see these less than and greater than signs. And inside of here, we're just going to replace this with basic floor. And it won't immediately work because we need to set up the dimensions for this particular thing. So we go over here to our building generator. And by default, we can just give this a module dimension of one by one. Then for our actual pink wall, we can auto fill those dimensions, right? So it'll just fetch the dimensions from this module dimensions over here. Then you'll see that this works, right? It replaces each one of those blocks with one of our pink walls. So let's get into how this works exactly. 
So over here, where we have our pink wall module that we've created, it's just this basic little thing over here. We have given it a name called pink wall. Then in our building generator utility, we have a floor description over here called basic floor. In basic floor, the pattern for our basic floor is this pink wall with this less than and greater than sign. All this means is that this is going to be repeated. So all the way across a single floor, we're going to keep repeating pink wall. That's all that means. It means keep repeating pink wall all the way across. Then when we use that same syntax over here by saying basic floor with this less than and greater than, what we're saying here is repeat that for every floor going up, right? So keep repeating basic floor. So basically the pattern for our floor is repeat pink wall all the way across. And then over here, we're saying repeat basic floor all the way up. This is going to become a bit more clear when we add more modules. So let's go ahead and add another module. I'm just going to add another module over here. It's going to be a very similar thing. We're just going to make this one a blue wall. So blue wall module. This one over here, we can make a different color, something like that. So now we have a pink wall and a blue wall. And let's just merge these two together. And this is what we're going to bring in over here. So we just need to change the name over here on our building generator utility to blue wall. So this one over here is pink wall. This one over here is blue wall. Now we go over to our building generator utility and let's try something different. So I'm going to remove this expanded form for pink wall. And now let's try something different. I'm going to use these square brackets and inside of here, I'm going to put blue wall. Then outside of that, we're going to do this repeat. And then the repeat is going to be pink wall. And then at the end, we're going to do another blue wall. So what we're saying here is we're saying do a blue wall, then fill the entire space that's remaining with a pink wall and end it with a blue wall on the end, right? So if we go over here now, you'll see that this is exactly what we get. We get a blue wall, it fills the entire thing with pink walls, and then we have a blue wall at the end, right? So that's what it's given us. The cool thing is we can make all sorts of changes to the pattern over here. So going back to this building generator utility, the way that you can alternate between different walls is if you have this full, so the full will just repeat. If you put dash and then the other one that you want, you can have pink wall dash blue wall, right? So then it will just alternate between blue and pink, blue and pink. Alternatively, you can also do something like this where we have square brackets and we say blue wall and then put a number. So how many blue walls do we want? Let's say we want three blue walls and then the rest are going to be pink walls. So then we fill the rest with pink wall. And the order over here matters. So if you want to switch the order, you can move this part to the end and we can do three blue walls after the pink walls. If you want a blue wall in the middle of all the pink walls, you do pink wall like that and then pink wall at the end and this will surround it just like that. Okay, so that gives you an idea of how this pattern works. These angle brackets over here are for filling and the square brackets are for single modules. So we can fill, then single module, then fill. Another cool thing that you can do is we can just use pink wall over here. And for our corners, we can just use blue wall, right? So now we just have the blue walls only on those corners. Another thing that I just want to show you is that over here where we have our module dimensions, we can actually change the heights of each of our modules. Now our modules should always match the size that we have over here. So do be careful when you're making a change to the module dimensions, they will need to fit in your actual modules. So let's say that these all have a height of two. You will see that this no longer fits, right? You'll see that we have these empty spaces and that's because each one of these are now too small. So on our grid, let's make sure that they match. So we're also going to increase the height over here to two and the height over here to two. And now if we go back over here, you'll see that each module is now taller, right? We now have these longer modules. Now, if we want a different floor as well, we can do that. And so let's go ahead and just add some windows, right? So I'm going to add another module over here, I'm going to increase the rows, do an extrusion on individual elements, poly bevel them, give them a window frame, and then color each window like that. In our building generator utility, we'll just call this window. We merge this in with the rest of them. Then over on the side, we're going to need to create a new building utility. So a new floor description. So we can duplicate this one over and we can call this windowed floor. And in our building generator utility over here, all we're going to do is just change this up. So perhaps we want an alternating pattern of windows and walls. So what we'll do over here is we'll say window dash wall. So window dash pink wall. And the module name for this will be windowed wall. Now we need to merge this in with the rest of our floors. So we can merge over here just like that, right? So we have our floors over here and we have our modules on the right. Then in our pattern over here, we show floors. We now have a windowed wall as an option 
And now we can just alternate between the two, right? So we can do basic floor dash windowed wall. We take a look at what we have. You'll see that we have a windowed wall then a basic floor and it just keeps repeating onwards. And just one more thing that we can do is that we can do variations. So let's just say that we have two different types of windows. So I'm going to duplicate this over right over here. And just to keep this simple, I'm going to call this one dirty window. So this module name is now dirty window. And the only difference with this one is that the windows are going to be a slightly darker color, right? Something like that. Merge this in with the rest of our modules. Then all we have to do is on this window one over here, we can add a variation. And the variation that we're going to add is just dirty window. It needs to match the name over here. So dirty window and dirty window over here. Now you won't notice any difference when we run this through our building from patterns. And that's because on the pattern where we're using this, we just have to tell it to use the variations inside of it. So over here where we have window and pink wall, just add an asterisk after window and this will add the variation. Right, so now it will randomly choose one or the other. And let's just say we want three floors before our windows begin. Sure, we can do that. All we have to do is over here in square brackets, we'll say basic floor and let's do three. So now there's three floors before our windows begin. We have to combine it with these modules that we generate using the building generator utility and these floor patterns that we generate over here. You can get creative with this. For example, you can add balcony modules, you can add aircon modules all sorts of things like that. And yeah, just get really creative with it. And also keeping in mind that the outputs are all varied. So this one over here where we output points, we actually have access to the module names over here. So if we were to take these points into a game engine or if we were to render, we can replace it based on these names over here. So we can replace each point with an instanced module. So that's it for this video. I do hope that this helped you. I'll be seeing you soon for a brand new video. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.